One, uh, I guess for Daphne, when did you when did you get a call to go audition for the part of Grace? Well, you know, it was just another day in the life of the weird life of being an actor. You know, I was going on this thing, but I read the script, and I told him about the role. I know, right? Um, and um, I knew nothing about Doctor Who at all. It was just another script, but it was a good one and a great part. And um, and then I think I found out fairly quickly that you were going to be in it, and I was like, oh, I know him. As if you knew. <laughs> I knew him, don't I? Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> I was a total, like, yeah, total geek. I was like, oh my God, that's the guy from the You kept that Well, you kept I had to be well. sort of semi cool. <laughs> and when, then, you, uh, when you got the script, did you just did you do what I normally do? Just read the bits that you were in. No, I read the I read the whole thing. I like the stories, and besides that, we're well, sort of in the whole thing. So like, there <laughs> <laughs> were bits that I wasn't in with EG, so you know, you're the master had your thing, but I read it. And anyway, so yeah, I didn't know anything. Okay, I just auditioned and got lucky. Right. Gigi, what about your what about your audition? Was it what what uh, you brought in? Yeah, there there's a there's an audition process, you know, and often there's more than one audition that you go to. As it happens with this one, there was three of them. Um, and uh, I don't know if you guys want to hear the story. Some of you have probably heard it again. She's not okay. Fine, I'll tell you the story. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you're sorry. You can the, uh, <laughs> the third audition. So by now they've whittled it down to like you know two or three people. I think there's only two of us actually. Um, the third audition was in the studio in Burnaby, which was on this uh, street called Logita Highway, and it's about an hour outside of town, outside of downtown where I live. Um, and and the, the night that I was going there, um, it was, you know, it was, it was a dark and stormy night, um, and I'm driving in my little VW uh, Volkswagen Beetle or whatever, um, and at just all these things happened, and traffic, and bad stuff, and I was very, very late to this audition, and, and as you guys probably know, well, Paul, you don't audition, but... Um, <laughs> What am I asking him for? He doesn't know anything. <laughs> no, um, when, when you're when you're when you're an actor going to an audition, you are not late. Um, it's it's a very it's like a crime. It's a, it's a crime to humanity, basically. Um, and and I was quite late to this audition, and uh, and I thought, well, you know, I'll show up, and if 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 they're still there, I'll do it. Um, otherwise, I've I've blown it, and you know whatever, right? But so I go there, and. Um, by some chance, they are they are all still there. Phil Siegel and uh, Trish Robinson, and the casting director, everybody's still actually there. And I do the audition, and I, I don't remember much about it because mostly I was just freaking out. Um, and uh, and then so I left, and I was like, okay, well that's that's that, right? And several weeks later or whatever, I found out I got the part and um, was completely blown away. Just totally that, like I don't know. I was like, whatever happened, you know, ah, you know, okay, great. Um, <laughs> And then at this at this convention at the '96 Gallifrey, um, the first con convention that I'd gone to, it was right after the movie came out. <coughs> Philip Siegel was there, and someone asked him the question uh, in a panel, just like this. He said, "So, how did you decide um, to to hire Yiji as as Chang Lee?" And he said, "Well." Um, there's a lot of deliberation and blah blah blah, but in, in, in the end, we wanted this this quality for the character of um, someone who who just doesn't care. And <laughs> Yiji was an hour late to the audition, and we just got this impression about him that he had this similar quality. And I was like, all right, fine. Turn it goes through play. Sometimes it works, I guess. I don't know. Now, Paul, you interviewed for you auditioned for uh, uh, when it was going to be a TV series. Now, it, it must have been rather unusual to get a call from your agent and say they want you to audition to play Doctor Who. <laughs> what, you, what, what happened when you, when you got told to audition for the part of the Doctor? It must have been interesting. We we were aware. Uh, so we most of the yeah. the actors in I know certainly in England were aware, and there were rumors around that, that, that it was it was going to be a production mounted Doctor Who was going to return. Um, and both I and my brother, Mark, That's right, Mark. Yeah, we were asked to go and uh, read with the casting agent, uh, Dan, um, John Hubbard, yeah. Hubbard Casting. So um, we were sent the piece of script, as usual, and we had to prepare. Um, we went on separate days. I knew that Mark was going, and you know, yeah. Mark knew that I was going. Um, the reason was that Philip had seen me and my brothers in a production on TV the year before. So the Hanging Girl? The Hanging Girl. Yes. Thing, yeah, I think that we, I've seen it. we'd all did together. And, um, anyway, so, I mean, so, so Phil says, you know, by dint of this costume that I was wearing, which to him looked doctorish, um, he, and he'd never heard of me, but um, he found out who I was, and 
he called us in. But I'm convinced that um, he couldn't tell Mark and I apart. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know on YouTube apparently these, these your two. Your audition, I've seen your audition. audition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Mark, yeah. Good and at that time there was, uh, I have to say, as, I, as far as I remember, my memory is terrible generally for things, but um, the script, pieces of script that we used, were different. Yeah. They were different, of course, from the finished piece. And um, um, so maybe I'll go on YouTube and have a look because if you do, you'll you'll see um, you'll hear different things, and I think it's quite interesting. Yeah, it's from the pilot of the actual the original TV pilot. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, and you know, so we you know they, they had to give us a sort of background to that, and it was interesting. So in a sense, what you know what I ended up doing wasn't the thing that I auditioned for. Yeah. In one sense, but um, anyway, that's why he. he uh, he saw the pair of us, and then began this six, seven, eight months of his having to persuade me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> what eventually persuaded you? Well, he did his enthusiasm, really. Phil is right. am yeah, Phil's well. amazing. I mean, the reason we're sat here, you know, yeah. no word of a lie, it's because of Phil's energy, enthusiasm, and, right. and love for it. Right. You know, against ridiculous odds. <laughs> Phil drew it together. It was Phil that, you know, more than anybody, not not alone obviously, but more than anybody, you know, is responsible for for getting that thing made. Um, you know, at a, at a tricky time, and he never lost his sense of humour. He was around all the time, um, and even when the thing was, you know, when when, when it was transmitted. <laughs> uh, um, it was never, transmitted. Yeah, you guys, when it aired, <laughs> when it came on TV. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, but transmitted, you gotta think there's this, there's this towel. You, know, you guys are so foreign. Actually, I mean, you don't even listen to the wireless, do you? No, we listen to crystal sets. No, no, no. You're so, I don't know, elegant. Yeah. You're such a power. This brings up a valid question, um, believe it or not. When did, uh, do you guys remember the first time the three of you met, or when you met Paul and when EG you met Paul and, and met each other? Well, I remember when I met this dude. Okay. But this dude, we were on set now. By the yeah, time you came along, we, yeah, we were, were right we were like, yeah. 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 I did, I, uh, and you had that slightly scary, I don't care kind of vibe. Nonchalant. At two in the morning. <laughs> yeah, we were slightly in awe. <laughs> he took the master on and no problem. He was no. fearless. I was like, well, oh, be careful. Yeah. <laughs> Take care. I remember. I remember? Like, remember? Yeah. I was like, are you okay? Is he taking okay? okay? But did we do some kind of... Did we do a read we did through? A reading. We did a read through, right. Oh. And that's when we met. And, and I, I, I've since found out that he... He really didn't like it when I sat next to him. <laughs> there were all these chairs, right? It's like this whole side Did of the you table. Do that? Yeah, and I sat right next to you, and you were like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> sit next, right next to me. There's all these chairs, and she can't sit next to me. And I'm thinking, you know, no, I'm just thinking, well, you want to see that? us together. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see us together? We're leaving <clears throat> this thing. We're going to be working together. So I figured sitting next to you would be the right thing to do. Um, I had fun sitting next to you, I don't know. It was fine for me. I was plainly really uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and she's never stopped doing that kind of thing. I'm constantly, I'm sorry. You're constantly on my case. <laughs> <laughs> so we did a read through and then, what was that, where was that? Was that in Vancouver? Or was it? Yes, that was in Vancouver. And um, so I'd, I'd gotten there, um, you had done a, a fitting. I'd gone in for my fitting and I wanted to see what you looked like. So I was like, do you have any of those Polaroids? Because they take Polaroids of you yeah. when you're in your outfits. And uh, and they showed me a Polaroid of you. And you had that short, short hair. <laughs> and you weren't smiling, you were just sort of... <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> he's gonna, he's going to have me for lunch, you know. Yeah. And then, it was my inner Eccleston. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Interactive. Yeah. 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 Oh. That's right. You're ahead of your time because when you came, well, yeah. you came off a movie, came off a movie where you were in the, the SAS yeah. and your head was shaved. Yeah. yeah, you wanted the leather jacket. I wanted the leather jacket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The short hair. Phil told me I was crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he fell in love with those locks. They said no. He said it's got to be romantic. It's got to be soft. It's got to. He was wrong, wasn't he? No. <laughs> they fell in love with you. Everybody fell in love with your look. They did. <laughs> 
so what was it like the, the day you had to meet Just your wig, Paul? Huh? <laughs> I sulked for about six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like now, because like, we sit, I have to sign them, but you know when you look at those photographs, I can't look at those photographs. Oh. See a sulking face, it's all like scowling face. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it ain't just a wig, they've got to glue the thing. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's like this full, every yeah, morning. No, it's uncomfortable. Yeah, whatever. It ain't. Right. It is what it is. You but didn't complain about But it's like a facelift, because when you know when they put glue in your hair, <laughs> well, it's yeah. kind of slightly limiting. <laughs> It's like permanent wrinkles on the side from that glue for a while, and, and we were so mean. He's yeah. he, you, you were like, you went, oh my god, and you you like you saw it for the first time, and and it just struck everybody funny. We were we were all busting out laughing, and you were like, I know, yeah, I mean, I'm dying here. I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. Face, man. <laughs> yeah. you hated that way. I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> At the end, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to ceremoniously burn it. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, like, you, like we used to they do at, at the end of school, you know, yeah. with our blazers. Because no, when we got to the end, skipping to the end here, sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry. But at the end of the shoot. But everything was taken away from us instantly. I know. You know, because usually actors, what actors try and do, you want to work on a picture, but see if you, you, you have a nice bit of costume or a prop you like, you put it in your bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, these are the, like they, 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 on film sets, they buy books by the yard, literally, to dress sets. And there's always a couple of nice ones. I, I, my whole library at home is <laughs> stolen from various films. But this one, they kind of knew, and we were like eyeing little bits and bobs over the TARDIS. Um, but security stops, everything went into boxes, well, including that wig. They were, they were thinking we were going to be shooting. That's right. They had to keep everything for the shoot yeah. if we were going to be picked up for a series. So uh, that was part of it. Exactly right. But I, I have to say, I don't know where I've been. I never nick anything. I don't nick stuff. And I'm like, what if I, I missed out, yeah, you man? Missed out. Did, you, did you ever steal stuff from sets? Um, no, I went, don't the, I went to the. No, I actually don't. I actually don't know. I it's expected. That well, you know, <laughs> you, you, you're you're British. In the budget. <laughs> yeah, but but only the British actors are allowed to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I do go to the set. I do go to the set sales. Um, they have these set sales sometimes, and um, uh, as it happens, I did manage to get the uh, the Changwei's jacket, the silver, black, and and uh, oh, you the orange stripe uh, jacket. Um, well, you paid for it. Well, <laughs> I sound appalled. Paul. I saw you coming, man. Yeah, it's, it's like shooting fish in a barrel, really. These, especially the Canadians, you know. I mean, you might as well just, you know, you're practically ripping them off when when they walk in the room. We're so polite. We just, we just, we just think it's it's the decent thing to do, don't we? <laughs> well, uh, even more of a sucker. No, I mean, this, it's actually this is this is something that's probably a, a good thing. Um, uh, years years later, a couple of years ago, I, I donated the jacket to Andrew Beach at the BBC because he had he had recently procured um, the Doctor's um, costume mm -hmm. for the Doctor Who experience. So at some point, I so know, I know all this stuff is now. Yeah, I, well, no, not all this stuff. It, I'm, I'm for, the, the sad thing is, is that a lot of the the sets and, and set pieces and everything just went. They, that, when they realized the show was going to go, then they stopped hoarding the stuff and it just went to pot. Yeah, we it just went it. everywhere. And somebody saved the TARDIS console, for example. It's during yeah. the tour. It's during the tour of the tours of the conventions and stuff. And um, and Andrew Beach got a hold of of, of his uh, his costume. Yeah. And and the idea is that eventually um, it, it might be part of the Doctor Who experience. And so I I, I thought, well, Chang Lee's jacket sort of rightfully belongs with the Doctor's yeah. costume. So hopefully one day all that stuff will be on display. Capaldi's got my chair. Well, yeah, yeah. There you go. yeah. Chair from the yeah that's made about the show, is which is amazing. Capaldi's got it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of your costume, Paul? I mean, did, were, were you, did you did you like the kind of Ed, like romantic Edwardian look? No, I wasn't hugely. I wasn't that <laughs> thrilled. I could understand why, because it was made plain why, um, why Philip, um, why it should look like that. I mean, but then, you know, when we made that pilot, a because it was a pilot, and also. Because it was Doctor Who, and there are you know, there's lots of sort of iconic elements to Doctor Who that you can't afford to right. miss, leave out. Um, and Philip said, "Look, it is what it is. It has to be this way. Um, it's, it's non-negotiable. You have to wear this kind of thing, do this kind of thing." And that was understood. Um, I think the only there's a scene in it where he, when he's trying to dress himself, he finds a scarf yeah. and puts it back. 
Yeah. Yeah, that was that. Uh, that was my decision. I um, but this film wanted me to wear it, and that was the only, I suppose, veto. The only little thing I, I said, I don't. He said, well, put it, just hang it up there. It'll be funny. It was hilarious. I yeah. love that. So that worked. But otherwise, no, I had to wear it. Around. And I kind of, I don't know. It wasn't the the easiest one to. It looked good, but it wasn't the easiest one to move around in. Yeah. <coughs> You know, it would have changed had we gone with a, a series. I think that would have changed. I would have got my leather jacket in the end. Through <laughs> <laughs> sheer force of personality. <laughs> well, you did. You you transmitted it ten years into the future. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You finally did end up in your leather jacket. I was transmitting. You guys were airing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you guys went to. Sunny, well, actually, wintry Vancouver. I yeah, was freezing. It was freezing. <laughs> it was freezing. <laughs> and they were all it's night shoots, of course. Yeah. It was because it was, you know, yeah. for the most part, the picture was, you know, 10 minutes to midnight. So they were n nearly all night shoots we shot at night. Yeah. It was cold. And it was like a record breaking. Cold. It was scary. Yeah. Yeah. It was like it snowed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't snow in Vancouver very often yeah, at snowed. all. So this one was cold. It snowed on my birthday. And weren't we sharing oh. the hotel with the X Files people? Yeah, <laughs> there were lots of That was kind of cool and weird. I remember they used to rope the bar off. And they, uh, oh, that's right. They used to, yeah, they used sometimes to like, could, keep us away yeah. from the... Or, or sometimes if you're in the bar, they put a rope around you. <laughs> <laughs> like something like you were the, you were the, the happening thing. Like, <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> and then we come down in the, in the, in the lift, um, and there would be the, the, the X-Files people. Because yeah. no one would speak to anybody else. It was all kind of very exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you were in the lift. If you were in the lift sometimes, you'd be you, like, hey man, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Okay. Actually, it's really cool. I have to say that about Vancouver. You go to Vancouver and you start running into people that you worked with 20 years ago. I ran into the guy who played my uncle on a show I did when I was 21 called A Family Honor. And I loved this man and have not seen him since. I haven't seen him since that moment, but on the left, I turned to him like, yeah. Tom Mason! Oh my God! Yeah. And it was like a reunion because he was like my uncle on that show. You know all those people you, you haven't seen for years and really wonder where they are? That's where they are. They're all in Vancouver. They're in Vancouver. They're in Vancouver. They're doing really well. <laughs> because, because Vancouver at the time was where a lot of television was being made. So still is. Still is. <laughs> we call it Little Hollywood. <laughs> so was that your first time you ever shot in Vancouver, nothing? Or? Oh, no, no, no. Uh -uh. No, because it's like Little Hollywood. I shot a movie the week called That Secret Sunday there years before that. And um, Is it because it was meant to look like? Because it has a lot of facades. Right, you can like make it look like or, San Francisco or yeah. New York or, or uh, L.A. But without the mad heads. <laughs> and they also have the, the, the beautiful uh, mountains all around yeah. it, so it's you can get a lot out of it, and it's cheaper. What was strange, what was strange was um, over the weeks that we shot it, was that feeling that, because um, it's weird to make a pilot. Most pilots, that, that, you know, got to be remembered, don't go to series, they don't get made. But you know, you don't, you don't work on them in that spirit, you know, you assume that it's going to go and it was strange when they'd been in Vancouver and potentially we were going to be there another five or six years yeah. you know you sign these contracts it's a standard contract when you make a pilot and if the thing goes if it's successful you belong to them for five years and so we were you know the chances are we were going to reconvene in this place six seven eight months later so we're kind of looking at houses there the day. and our children were small then weren't they yeah little babies. so like we're looking at schools um, it was strange um, but that's the but that's the actor's life, isn't it? It is. And suddenly it's over, and you ain't gonna. The kids aren't gonna be Canadians after all. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it was. Yeah. That's what it felt like. Yiji, you're you're a you're a Vancouver native, so this is so you must be used to like all these sort of American productions coming in and shooting and bringing you in and stuff like that. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's constant. I mean, it's it's everywhere. I, I so in in one regard, I'm lucky in that I get to work on a lot of different shows. Um, and in another regard, usually the main, the, the lead characters are cast by the time they get to that stage. Right. So I'm usually not up for, um, for like even though I could have been maybe, I just not they're not there in that stage of casting. They hire in um, LA. They hire in LA. Yeah. And if I if I was in LA, I probably would be up for those roles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and at one point, I had to make that choice. I was, you know, people were telling me like, you know, now is the time. You need to go down there. Um, and I went down for a few months, and I just I wasn't feeling. I'm not the guy that can go to a bar and talk to directors and make myself 
more available for work. I don't know. I don't know how you're supposed to do it anyway. Yeah, that's, why you, that's why you that's why you work because they think you don't care. Man. <laughs> Don't ever change. Don't ever change. Right, Listen to your mother. Don't ever change. <laughs> um, but yeah, but then I mean, Vancouver. My life has been great there, and I live in a nice little house that's close to downtown. I have two wonderful kids and a wife that Beautiful I forgot wife. for, and yeah. So. Um, and you work. Yeah, I work, I work. yeah um, I do other stuff too, but I do I get to do I get to go on set. And you haven't aged. I know. <laughs> That's so spooky. It's this ring in my pocket, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, No, the uh, you give it to me. <laughs> This might be more. Uh, I wanted to ask about working with Eric Roberts because uh, uh, because he's, he's a, he seems like a big personality to me. Is, is, was that the case on set? Take it away. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> I thought Eric did. I thought he did great. Yeah, I know it's great. Yeah. Again, Eric. I don't know how much Eric. You know, you said before you'd not really. You, you didn't know anything about Doctor Who, really. I don't. I don't remember Eric did either. Um, I rem I think he knew some. Maybe in time, but nevertheless, he really got into it. Yeah, he could do you know, that. He, 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 yeah, he was a good pro, Eric. He's, he's, yes. You know, it's not, it wasn't an easy thing for him to do. He was, I mean, he was kind of mystified. Eric's a little bit vague, isn't he? Let's, let's not beat him up the book. Um, he's delightfully vague sometimes. But when the camera turns over, he's bang on, he's fantastic. Yeah. You know, and I thought he did brilliantly. Um, and he, I think he enjoyed himself. It was difficult to tell, but. Yeah. Uh, it was difficult to tell. <laughs> Did he enjoy himself, EJ? Yeah, you were with him most. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I think he did. Uh, Eric, <clears throat> I think that he, the way that he, um, the way that he brings what he brings to the character on, on the screen, um, is that he's carrying quite a bit of that around uh, off screen as well. And, and <coughs> sometimes it's a little, a little hard to read. Like, I still to this day, I don't know if, because the, the master in Chang Lee... Well, like world domination, kind of well, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, he had the... He, the, the master, in, I'll, I'll put it in context of what I, what I know directly about him, is that, it, is that the, um, the, the master in Chang Lee had this sort of, he had this sort of fraternal relationship with Chang Lee, right? Like this patriarchal mm. kind of thing going on, like a mentor or something mm. like that. And he took that role on off set almost as like a you know like a second dad kind of thing or like you know he he, he assumed this role with me of, of yeah. being so I mean some some I, I've heard some reports of people having you know troubles working with Eric and I didn't get any of that because he was taking on this role like he was taking care of me almost right and he would have these talks with me Good like friend. these sort of like these mentorship kind of talks with me so I and I don't know if that's just how he is or if that's what he was sort of creating off set in order to continue it, you know, when, when, we're, on, when we're on screen kind of thing. Uh, yeah, um, so whatever that was, I, I had to just go with it. Here I am, I'm a kid, and this is Eric Roberts, and I'm doing this role, and, and that is my role. But he looked out you. He so, looked yeah, so I just, cool. I just went with it, and it was, it was great, yeah. 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 One of the questions, one of the things I wanted to ask about was uh, working with Jeffrey Sachs as a director because it is, even looking at it today, the TV movie is so well directed. It is, it is, it is exceptional for an American TV movie. It, it, and, and I was wondering, you know, what was it, what was he like on set? Was he? Was... I have to say, I, I got to see him for the first time since the, we wrapped the movie last year when we went to the UK. Oh, yeah, and yeah. I'm telling you, it was the, talk about a guy who hasn't aged. He's actually gotten younger looking. I'm not kidding. It's freaky. Um, but so there's that. Um, but he's the sweetest guy, and I'd forgotten so much about his personality. He's so effervescent, and um, and a lot of things that I didn't know that he brought to the uh, movie uh, that worked in the script, like the the famous slow mo running through the hallway in the gown, yeah. that thing. Yeah. That was all him. He 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 thought that up. A lot of the stuff where you were wandering around with the toe tag was him. Um, you know, he brought a lot of. He was he's very visual. Yeah. And a sweet heart and working all the time. The man never stops working. So, on the set, I have to say, um, he he's he it was a perfect combination of a great director. He knew when to back off and let you do your thing and he really did just yeah, let us do our thing a lot. The crew liked him, the, te the technicians liked him, you know, he understood that side of things, but also he could talk to actors. That's right. You know, not every director 
Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering about that because he, 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 he has such a visual style. I was wondering how he was with actors. He, he, yeah, he was very easy. He was, uh, very easy. Yeah. Stepped he, in when he, he should, didn't when he shouldn't. You know, it was perfect. Yeah, and, you know, it, was a, it could be a tense atmosphere when it was necessary. But he, as well, he looked after us. He kept that. He kept us shielded from that kind of thing. He was good. Very good to work. Yeah. Yeah. Really liked him. Yeah. Did you guys ever have any like Fox execs wandering around saying, oh, what's this Doctor Who thing kind of thing? Or was yeah, there were people. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was, I just... Um, occasion, I think Philip, again, one of the good things I think about Vancouver is it's just far away enough that they don't want to get on the plane. Yeah, they're not there all right. the time. Not, yeah, otherwise they'd be there on your case all the time. Right. Uh, and if and when they would arrive, I think Phil, again, would make sure that they were, they were in and they were out. You know, we didn't see them really. Um, and that's how it should be. But they would, they were, uh, whatever the collective noun of the exec is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a boil. They the suits. Suits. sounds appropriate. No. Yeah, the suits. Yeah, a pestilence of suits. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess the last thing I want to ask before I turn over some audience questions is uh, I want to ask about the set. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, that must have been, it must have been, a, it looks gorgeous on screen. So, I mean, what was it like to actually step onto it for the first time? I remember seeing the TARDIS set for the first time. That's what I meant. Um, and it's actually that big. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It it's not, it's not CGI. It That's because they had all the space they wanted. Yeah. Um, nowadays, you know, they can just CGI it. But um, no, it's actually that big. It's the size of a warehouse. It was great. It was so <laughs> cool. Remember when the kids arrived and oh, yeah. the production had to stop while the kids played with the TARDIS. <laughs> <laughs> 25 grand an hour, or whatever it was, you know, it closed down for an hour and a half. Um, that was exciting. It was great to see. Because um, later on, you know, people back in the UK kind of, I don't know, they didn't like the idea that it looked so glamorous and it looked so yeah. swanky and bright. Um, no, there was that. But um, anyway, that's what I was thinking. It looked beautiful. It looked, yeah, I thought it was good. Why don't we take some questions from the audience about the 96 movie? Okay, we're going uh, to start with the kid with the fez. You, hello. Come on up. Is there a mic, is there a mic up front? No? Do we have a mic? Do we have a mic for the audience or no? Why don't you put one on the stand? I think... The EEG's going to handle it. Oh. The man will give you his last microphone. I'll be the interview. Oh, you can What's your name? Kelly. I'm just curious, um, what is your dream role, like, to play? Dream role? Dream role. What is your dream role? Dream, uh, I, 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 my dream role actually has changed over the years, and I've missed a few because I'm too old. Um, oh. Yeah, I can't, you know, do Juliet, right? It's over. Um, but what I want to do now is, um, uh, who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? I want to play Martha. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I want someone to write my dad, my late father. I'll do that for you. Will you? Yeah. yeah. Send me some information. He's been dead years, my dad, but I miss him. Uh, but what's more, now I'm the age um, yeah. that I remember him yeah, yeah, best yeah. at. And I'm only just really beginning to figure out, figure him out. Um, and I wish I could write, I'd write it myself. I can do that. Because I, I love, love to play. Sometimes now, um, I'm seeing photographs, um, at the, these shows we do, and it's my dad. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes like, um, some of the fans draw uh, my face, and they always draw my father. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I come to these shows, and I keep seeing my dad in in, um, in pencil pictures. I saw a beautiful <coughs> painting of you yesterday, um, and, and that's um, panel. Is yeah. it the Michelangelo David one? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I have that. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was really beautiful. It was really beautiful, and it wasn't even finished. So yeah, that's my dream role. I want to play my own father. Oh. Eugene, what's your dream role? Um. Uh, so I'm still thinking about that. The, what Paul just said. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, well, uh, yeah. I'm gonna cry. No, I. Um, uh, my, I, I don't know if I actually have 